Welcome to session three of this course on understanding and managing anxiety. I'm psychologist, Dr. Tracy Moreno. In the previous session, we talked about the importance of having a strong mind-body connection. In this session, we'll talk about why we get anxiety and what our body is trying to tell us. Our body frequently gives us signals. Most of the time, our mind ignores it. For example, our stomach growls to signal us that it's time to eat. Well, a few hours go by. Now we're hungry and angry, which we can't ignore anymore. Then we remember that we haven't eaten in a while. When our mind ignores the signals our body gives us, our body makes the signals louder, even worse, until we can no longer ignore it. Our body also warns us when we're uncomfortable or something's wrong or when we're in danger. However, when we're not actually in danger, it can make us feel like our body is failing us. We can become mad, mad at our body, which means we become mad at ourselves, which means we've now put ourselves in an internal conflict. How can we fight much less win against anxiety when we're fighting against ourselves? We can't. Fighting it just compounds the problem and makes the problems and the symptoms even worse. This is what I call having anxiety over our anxiety. But anxiety is not our enemy. I understand that we feel like our mind and body is failing us, but it's not. Anxiety is actually a function of survival. It's our body's way of trying to protect us when we're in danger or we feel threatened. Anxiety activates our sympathetic nervous system and releases adrenaline through our body that triggers a fight, flight, or freeze response. If you're not already familiar with this, fight is when we fight or attack when faced with danger. Flight is when we want to run away when faced with danger. And freeze is when we're just unable to respond or even move when faced with danger. These physiological responses are a survival mechanism. This mechanism has been part of our makeup since the creation of man. I'm sure this mechanism came in very handy and saved many cavemen and women when being chased by a lion or stared down by a dinosaur or confronted with any other life or death situation. However, life is a bit or a lot different so now that lion may be our own intrusive thoughts. That dinosaur can be our spouse or our boss. That life or death situation can be someone cutting us off in traffic. It's important to know the underlying root cause of anxiety, which may be from an event that happened many years ago, childhood even. We need to process and heal from what happened to us because whatever it was that signaled a fight, flight, or freeze response at that time in our lives, and we need to address it. We need to do this so our body won't feel the need to continually react and overreact to current situations and problems in an effort to protect us. If we don't dig down deep into the root of the problem, we'll only be treating and managing the symptoms of anxiety, but we may not ever be free from it. Treating the symptoms and not the root of the problem is like putting a Band-Aid on a big gash. It's not only ineffective, it's also just temporary. It's also important that we recognize that we're not going crazy or losing our mind. I know sometimes it feels like the anxiety comes out of nowhere and for no reason, but that's usually not the case. There's often a very good logical reason why we experience anxiety, and we could actually be repeatedly reacting to a painful experience from our past that was never worked through or resolved. Even if we believe we moved on in our mind, our body holds on to that pain especially when there's a poor mind-body connection. 
This also tells us that we really didn't move on in our mind like we may have thought we did. It could be that our very clever defense mechanisms kicked in and put us in a state of denial, repression, or avoidance in order to protect us. So we may not even realize how much the pain from the past continues to affect us currently. This is why we should have a better understanding and more compassionate for our, and more compassion for ourselves. There's a reason we're experiencing anxiety. Think of it as our body's way of telling us that it's time to heal. This could help us work with the anxiety rather than fight it. We're going to do a guided meditation to help us have an understanding and compassion for ourselves. For your therapy homework, I want you to practice this meditation daily, even when you're not experiencing anxiety. Remember, while we're in it, we regress back to what we know. So we want this to be what we know and what we're used to. This meditation includes a few affirmations at the end that are that say the word not. Using a negative word that takes away from something as opposed to a positive word that adds something is debatable regarding its effectiveness. However, this is just a theory and not a steadfast rule. We always have to figure out what works for us as individuals. I believe for our purpose today, my phrasing of the words and using the word not will actually work for us. And I'm hoping that it empowers you. But if it doesn't work for you, feel free to change the affirmations in your daily practice to what does work for you. For the daily practice of this meditation, I have a separate track on Insight Timer that you can use titled Meditation, Anxiety is Not Your Enemy. Go ahead and find a quiet place to sit or lay comfortably and find a comfortable position. If you need a moment, you can pause this recording and return when you're ready. Gently close your eyes and breathe through your nose. Take a deep breath in, allowing it to expand your stomach and breathe out through your mouth. Repeat this slowly a few more times and try to clear your mind. It's okay if thoughts pop into your mind. Just relax and clear your mind again. And you can do that as often as you need to. Now go ahead and breathe comfortably. You are now in a safe place of peace in your mind. Let go of the day, the stress, any problems in your life. Picture the most beautiful place you've ever imagined. This could be a place you've been, or a place you want to go, or a place that only exists in your imagination. Picture it clearly in your mind. See the colors vividly. What else do you see? Breathe in the air. What does it feel like or smell like? What do you hear?
take in what it feels like to be in this place. Breathe deeply and breathe in that beauty and breathe out the anxiety. You can deal with that stress later when you're calm and when you can think more clearly. But for now, be here, be in this beautiful place. You have nothing to do but just be present. When you're done with this meditation, you will be able to better handle the world. Please repeat each statement after me, either out loud or in your head. Anxiety is not my enemy. Anxiety does not control me. I love my body, my mind, and my spirit. I am strong and capable. I trust myself to handle anything. As you slowly open your eyes, thank your mind and your body and your spirit for giving you this time to recover and heal. Know that you can return to this place anytime you need to. This is the end of session three.